This video provides a very brief introduction to spectroscopy. Spectroscopy is the field of science that studies the interaction of electromagnetic radiation with matter. Okay, so we're going to have a sample uh, that consists of uh, molecules or a material, right? And, and what we know uh, from our quantum mechanics studies is that uh, energy levels in those uh, molecules in that sample, they are quantized. Okay, so we're going to simplify uh, those quantized energy levels by just drawing a few of them. Okay, we're going to call these the first energy level, that is the second energy level, and so forth. Right, so what spectroscopy does is it uh, is able to engage those energy levels by shining electromagnetic radiation. Okay, and in the most common form of spectroscopy, which is absorption spectroscopy, uh, what you do is you uh, promote the system from a low energy state to a high energy state as long as the difference in energy between these two states that are bridged by the uh, uh, excitation have the same energy as the photon uh, that you're actually shining on the sample. Right? So uh, there's something that we call the resonance condition for all spectroscopies, which is like this. The energy of the photon has to be identical to the difference in energy between uh, the initial state and the final state in the sample. In uh, emission, uh, you would es essentially flip the, pr the problem, right? What happens is that you start with a system in the excited state, and then the system might uh, go, go back to the ground state emitting a photon, right? So that would be emission, but it's uh, far less common than absorption. Well, so it turns out that uh, you can actually do this for uh, almost any type of photon that you have in the electromagnetic radiation spectrum. Uh, we're actually going to see the ones that are more common for uh, chemistry, and those will be as follows. So going in, in terms of uh, decreasing energy, you would have uh, photons in the UVP's range, then you will have photons in the infrared, then you will have photons in the microwave, and finally you will have photons of radio frequency uh, uh, properties. Now, of course, uh, the energy is very different, right? So the energy of a UVB's photon is about a million times lower than the energy of a radio frequency photon. So it's pretty obvious that the type of energy levels that you're going to be engaging with these uh, photons are very different. Okay, so the type of, of uh, motions uh, that you can promote in uh, uh, UV spectroscopy with UV photons are actually electronic. Right, so we can go back to this generic diagram and then say that uh, what really is going on here is that uh, you might have some electron in a low energy state and what you're doing is you're promoting that electron to the high energy state through absorption. Okay, so uh, the energies of those two states will be different, and that's what you're actually doing in UVBIS, right? Uh, those photons are quite energetic, and again, you can promote electronic excitation from a bonding orbital, perhaps, to an antibonding orbital, and so forth. Okay? Now, infrared uh, is less energetic than UVBIS, and what that means is that the electrons are actually not involved. Infrared, when you shine infrared uh, uh, radiation on a sample, on a molecule, the electrons actually don't change orbitals, they're not promoted. Instead, there's a different type of motion that gets engaged, and that is uh, molecular vibrations, right? So when you think about the age of the molecule, the age of the molecule is actually vibrating. And what you can do with infrared radiation is uh, increase the amplitude uh, of that vibration. Okay, it turns out that those vibration uh, energy states are also quantized, right? So what you would be doing is promoting the molecule from a low vibrational state to a high vibrational state. Okay, but the key here is to recognize that infrared engages molecular uh, vibrations. Okay, the microwave is even less energetic, right? So you will not be able to do anything with electrons. You won't be able to do anything with vibrations. It takes too much energy. But there's something else that you can do, and that is actually engage molecular rotations. Okay, so if you have a molecule in the gas phase, uh, like this one, okay, what will happen is that the molecule may be rotating or not, and then you shine a microwave photon, and then you can actually make it rotate. Okay, those rotations are also quantized, right? So you can have uh, a set of energy levels, and you're applying, you're promoting the system between uh, rotational energy levels. And finally, radio frequency, what we can do, the, the most common application of radio frequency spectroscopy is to change the nuclear spin. Okay, so uh, much as we have seen the electrons have spin, it turns out that the nuclei, or some nuclei in the periodic table, also have spin. And, and uh, uh, the way that we interpret that spin 
is like this. The, the, many of the nuclei can actually spin only this way, so up or down. So with a radio frequency photon, what you can actually do is invert uh, this spinning uh, oscillation, right? This spin in motion, and be able to change that spin quantum number. Those spin states are also quantized, and again, that's something that you can uh, engage with radio frequency um, uh, photons, right? So the important thing to remember here is what is the uh, the foundation of spectroscopy. Again, you're you're just uh, having a photon that is coincident. Uh, with the difference in energy between two energy states. And depending on the photons that you're shining, you can actually have, you can engage various energy states in molecules. Again, okay, UVBs, you would actually be promoting electronic transitions, infrared vibrational transitions, microwave uh, rotations, and then in, uh, with radio frequency fo photons, you will be uh, promoting nuclear spin transitions. Okay, uh, the techniques that we get out of this are NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance, and of course, MRI, which is just an application of nuclear magnetic resonance. All right, so in this video, we have uh, introduced the concept of spectroscopy, and uh, we have seen uh, generalities of it and different types of spectroscopy that are useful in chemistry.